Good morning, everybody. Or Jay here with another War of the Visions video, and today I am doing my Guild Wars defense tier list, or as you might come to learn it, it's more of a Guild Wars, my top three tips for defense with a tier list built into each tip tier list. You'll see. Basically, um, a lot of people were asking me, um, what about this character on defense? Or what about this team comp on defense? And defense in Guild Wars is a completely different monster than offense is because you need to think broader. You need to have a bigger game plan in mind. You need to be able to deal with more while simultaneously having less information or almost no information on who you're going to be fighting. So I'm going to give you the three tips that I like to tell our guild members to use, and then I'm going to give you kind of like the best ways to implement those tips in this video. Um, let's uh, get right into it. All right, so the first tip I want to talk about is sustain. Now, sustain is not something you necessarily need to bring with you on offense, because if you can do enough damage to kill three or more uh Units of the enemy, collect your three plus stars. Hey, run as much damage as you want on offense. Target the right things, have a tank or whatever, and you'll succeed. But defense is just different. On defense, you don't necessarily know who you're going to be fighting, and the ability to sustain up during a fight or at the beginning of the next fight is really crucial to getting um, multiple defense. So uh, bullet point one here. It is the best way to get more than one defense, in my opinion, is sustain. Sure, you might get lucky in your first fight, and the person who attacks you just made the worst choice imaginable, and so you just destroy them, and you're fresh for a second defense. But most of the time, that's not going to be the case, especially if you're fighting a guild that is like on par with you. You're probably going to get hit by somebody who's on par with you, and they're going to do damage. So even if you win the fight, you're going to be beat up. With sustain, hey... Beginning of fight two rolls around and your Ayaka is healing people, your Ildir is heal healing people, etc. So it's really important for that. Also, a lot of the sustain units in the game these days can hit back a little bit, right? Like, let's look at the calculators on this list. Little Leela, Ildira. Look at some of the mages like Kilfay and Miranda that bring healing if you want them to, but also... Uh, will knock a few people out for you as well. So these sustained characters bring more than just a little bit of healing to your team. Um, on top of all of that, a lot of them provide other utility, like uh, time magic, protect, shell, um, just buffs in general, right? Your sustained characters tend to be you know, well-rounded in some ways. Barely any of them are just healers. So let's talk about some of the best examples of sustained characters. I think you got to start right at the top of the list with little Leela. Um, she has instant cast heals. She has full life. Full life is one of the most important things to think about when you're talking about sustain on defense. Um, she has damage. And again, it's instant cast damage. So her ability to instant cast sets her apart from um, Ayaka, who's probably her closest competitor in terms of healing. Sometimes Ayaka will be charging a heal, and your teammate dies, she casts a heal later, it ends up hitting nobody, and then she's just kind of defenseless and dies. So, little Leela top of this list. Alright, Ayaka comes in at the next tier, she has her limit break, which is insanely good, and provides like the stop resistance and stuff like that. She has full life again, Ayaka also has access to time magic, now she doesn't have quicken, which would have just been next level for her, but she has haste, which is really useful, and she can do a little bit of damage if she's like prompted to I guess. Okay, also on the S tier for me is the other calculator, Ildira. Again, I love the instant cast stuff. I just maxed my Ildira, and I'm pretty pumped to put her in on some Guild Wars defense and Guild Wars offense. I'm actually pretty pumped for solo water teams. Be ready for that video soon. Anyway, we're talking about defense. All right, Ildira's really good. She has the healing. She has the damage. Now, she does. she's not as good of a healer as Little Leela, and she's not as good of a DPS sometimes as Little Leela, but she's got the instant cast. She's in that S tier to me. All right, A tier. Now here, A tier and below, these are characters that are either MR characters or their primary function is not healing. So I'm going to look at Kilfay for example. Kilfay is going to make more than one list on this video, but she can sustain. You can run White Mage on Kilfay and she'll prioritize buffing 
at the beginning of fights. Then next she'll prioritize dealing damage to the enemy. But she's a great unit for if your second fight starts and maybe you have Kane and he lived with only courage so he has one HP. Hey, Killfay's got Curata and she'll be real happy to top him off for you. So her sustain comes in at the beginning of fight two. She's one of the best units for that. She does enough damage and has good buffs to get you to the second fight. And then she has the sustain to start the fight to kind of almost make you feel like you're starting fresh again. Uh, Miranda, again, Time Mage, mostly her utility comes in the form of Quicken, but she has some heals in her kit, and with, you know, she's a Jamming Thrust user. She can, uh, get out there and drop those Jamming Thrust memes. So I like her as a support character, and she brings us some sustain. Then my B tier here, this is just, uh, these are MR characters. Grace is a great MR healer. Adelard is a great MR support character. There's all there's other ones that aren't on this list, but I'm not try not trying to make a 30 minute video where I do a mini review of like 10 different healing classes. Um, I'm just trying to give you an idea of why sustain is important, and you should bring sustain on Guild Wars defense most of the time, in my opinion. Okay, this one's getting a little long. Let's move on to the next list. Ah, yes, tanks. The uh, the other half of the classic combo. So, um, tank healer, you guys, if you're just confused about what to run on Guild Wars defense, it's hard to go wrong by just throwing your best tank and your best healer out there with someone who can do a lot of damage. Heck, I've even seen two tanks and a healer, and sometimes or another that'll win. I don't necessarily recommend that, but it can function. So let's talk about tanks. Why are tanks so effective on Guild Wars defense? Well, one, if you're having somebody heal you, then having somebody to receive the healing seems important, right? Have your tank gather in that aggro, take some damage, and have Ayaka and little Leela just topping them off over and over again, and then just laugh as people crash into your mountain that is Agrius, and your river of life that is little Leela just keeps her alive. And oh no, they finally burned through Warrior of Light. Guess what? Ayaka full lifes him, and they get to do the whole process over again. Tanks are just so important um, for like a well-balanced defense team. So the game offers multiple different like build paths for tanks now. Why do I bring that up? Because back in the day, it used to just be, hey, this character has Sentinel, they have defense, I'm going to build a bunch of defense, and here's my Engelbert. Well, nowadays, there's enough vision cards out there that offer either specific resist buffs or maybe like a resist buff and an attack type buff that you can build a tank to really um, highlight a couple strengths of that tank. For example, uh, Warrior of Light. Let's take Warrior of Light, for example. Uh, one of his weaknesses is piercing and dark. Hey, you can throw Demon Wall and Leviathan on him, and then all of a sudden, maybe somebody who is like, oh man, I'm about to go smash Warrior Light with my Kane, and Kane jumps on him and just like doesn't kill him. And the guy attacking him is like, wait, hold on. And then, oh, little Leela heals your Warrior of Light. And then Kane's still hitting him, and Kane still can't burn through him because he's built in a way that kind of confuses the enemy team. Um, look at your vision cards, look at your espers. Think, how can I amplify a tank to the point where my sustain can keep them alive? And if that's where your mind is, your mind's in a great place for Guild Wars defense. That's a really annoying thing to deal with, and it's a very safe build. It's a build that's never just going to go out there and get run over by the enemy without them having to expend any effort. So tank plus healer is just a classic combo. Um, and then also... A lot of tanks provide status effects. One of the ways that they tank is also one of the most OP things in Guild Wars right now, and that's status effects. So with those things in mind, let's look at the tier list here. Um, the SS tier for me is Warrior of Light Agrius. These two have been in that tier for a long time. I think Warrior of Light has recently re-risen to that tier as we've gained ways to amplify his pierce resistance, as we've gained ways to boost his dark resist. Um, Agrius has just been hanging out in that tier her whole life, and she might just live there for a long time because she brings status effect city. You can build her to just take the heck out of both magic and physical damage. So uh, she's probably the best tank in the game, in my opinion. Um, running one of those two, on defense, really solid. Say you don't have them. Well, let's look at the rest of these units. Rain, 
best magic tank in the game and can be built fairly physically tanky. He's a pretty good general tank if you throw like Golem on him and throw some more defense from gear and then mix in his ability to just innately tank magic. Hey, you have a pretty good tank. Dwayne does really good damage for a tank. Now, his hate generation is lacking and that keeps him out of that SS category. You're up down to that A category. Hey, look, there's Kilfay again. Yes, Kilfay has a spell mage sub job, so she can also kind of tank. Now again, she's not the best tank, just like she wasn't the best healer. But that that she can do both of those things makes her a really effective Guild Wars defense character. Um, because she just the enemy team doesn't know what to expect from Kilfay all the time. Except a lot of damage and a really annoying unit to kill. Uh, we also see like Dario and Engelbert on there. Dario, very versatile tank, um, can be built physical or magic based, really strong against magic. Engelbert, really, really strong physical tank, really, really weak magical tank, um, but viable. And then that B tier, just some more MR tanks like Nasha, uh, Ravis, and Mont. Any of these can work, and depending on the strength of your guild, where you are in Guild Wars, they'll be more effective or not. Hey, but Agrius Warrior of Light, good choice every time. Drop those status effects, you guys. We're going to talk more about status effects uh, in this next slide. Okay, this last slide is all about getting, uh, getting the mind games going on. So what do I mean by that? I mean, kind of start understanding the AI. Pay attention to what they do, and then build to fool that. Um, the AI in this game is pretty predictable a lot of the times. So if you uh, do things like throw Vow of Love on somebody that's kind of a surprise, you can fool the enemy teams into kind of going towards one part of a map. Now, obviously, that's going to depend on the map. We're getting a new map today or tomorrow, like when the new patch comes. So, uh, you know, be watching for videos on that. But Vow of Love, super effective at fooling the AI. Other things that are effective at fooling the AI, Dwayne's innate hate, um, characters with taunting spell, uh, putting your units into slot one that you want buffs on, etc. Learn what your people like to do, learn what the enemy team kind of tends to do on maps, and then build the AI to work how you want it to. Now, second tip here, change up your team comps on the regular. What I suggest doing here is going into like, dual builds or something right like where you can build those three man teams build two or three some number like that of really solid defense teams and then it's pretty easy every day or every other day to just copy and paste that squad into your defense that way it's hard for the enemy to scout you out they can't just look at what you had yesterday and say oh this guy's running agrius kane and uh, Glacella, I just need some piercing resist and I'll run him over. Well, if you all, if you have that team, but you also have Agrius, Christmas Ramada, or Landu, and they have similar attack values, and your Agrius is in like slot one, that guy might look at you and say, well, his attack's pretty close to the same, and he ran two piercing units yesterday, so I'm going to throw on Leviathan, I'm going to throw on a piercing resist gear, and I'm going to go run him over, and then guess what? Your slashing units run out there and just murder him. And he's like, well, wait a second. This is a piercing guy. No, you're not a piercing guy anymore. You randomly threw a slashing team in there, and because of that, you're going to get more than one defense today. Guys, the trick is get two or more defenses every day. If you do that, your guild will win consistently. Because if the enemy's not clearing you, and you're clearing them, you will win. Big brain stuff. Okay, last tip. Be as annoying as possible. This is where sustain comes into play. This is where tanky stats come into play. This is where um, status effects really come into play. Yes, Agrius makes the top of tier lists because even though she doesn't do the most damage in the game, she can win fights by herself. Oh, she lands an AoE stop, it's over. It's over. Who wins after two of the units on your team get stopped? Because we all know the units love to just hug it out. They love to be like, oh, Mont, you're tanking, bro. Let me put my arm around you and just chill because my name is uh, insert random squishy DPS unit here and we're brothers. And then Agrius walks up and is like, Actually, you're both stopped, and you're like, oh, well, I guess I lose. That sucks. Um, so be as annoying as possible. All right, let's look at the tier list for my tips 
on how to get tricky. One is status effects. I'll, I always run status effects on my Guild Wars defense. Because even if somebody goes into me and they've scouted me correctly and they're running what they want to run against me, bro, if, if Agrius confuses two people and they kill their own team, I win. So, cool. If I dis if Dwayne goes out there and lands a triple disable, I win anyway. Doesn't matter what your build is. Status effects are so important on Guild Wars defense. The most important thing in my opinion. Second most important thing in my opinion is the multiple teams on a rotation. I typically only run two. Um, that's about as... I don't know, I'm not going to say laziness, but I, I find my two best Guild Wars defense teams, and I tend to just rotate them. Not every other day, maybe I do two days with one, and then three days with another, but I do switch it up, so I am harder to predict than just my everyday team. That's, that's laziness. If you want to win Guild Wars, encourage your people to be less lazy. Okay, sustain plus a tank. That's going to be my first S tier ranking. If you just don't want to think about it too hard, run your best tank with your best sustain character and put a lot of damage on the top. Cool. Though your sustain and your tank characters are going to bring some status effects, they're going to bring some damage too. So sometimes that can just be enough to work and at least somebody will have to earn that win, right? Don't just give out free wins. All right, fourth tip, know the meta. You're going to need to run some vision cards for defending against certain things. You're going to need to put on gear. If you know that piercing is kind of dominating the meta at the moment, put Leviathan in there. Run some pierce resist. Don't let everybody with Kane just run you over for free every day. Like, look at your defense reports and say, oh, I got one defense again. And in fact, the guy that beat me went on to beat a whole nother team. That means you weren't even like a road bump for him. He ran you over so easy that he just killed somebody else on your team. You didn't do your job. So if you see that Kane's are just murdering you every day, put something in there to help fight against Kane. Know the meta and build a little bit against it in some way or another. All right, last two tips. Turn zero hate. This one is a little bit higher level thinking, but if you have a Dwayne and you know that teams, like like watch your offense, for example, right? And say, well, my offense tends to always move to the left and forward. Well, if your offense tends to do that, probably everyone's does. And so if you're playing against people who are serious, they're gonna build assuming that. Well, if you throw your Dwayne with his turn zero hate in slot three, Watch the enemy team is all of a sudden their plan of like moving in this direction will shift. And if you're just wanting to throw a curveball in there, put Vow of Love on somebody random. Now, make sure it's like a kill fay or something who can afford to take a hit. Uh, don't put Vow of Love on your Ildira, but put it on Kane and turn on Sentinel and let him be kind of tanky. Put it on Zombie Ryryu and give him two re-raises and just let him fool the enemy team for a minute. Then let your other team, let your other tank taunting spell once. And now the enemy's like, oh, I'm splitting my hate around and they don't kill anybody and you beat them. Play with Valve Love, play with Turn Zero Hate. I think it's a super like kind of next level thing. And then study your data. Look at how you did in yesterday's Guild Wars. And if you did bad, change stuff. If every day you're getting one defend, you suck. You should change some stuff. Um, just don't be ultimately lazy. Now, if your account is new and you're in a guild that's like higher level than your current account is, don't fret about it. Just focus on being as annoying as possible. And as long as somebody's not just murdering you for free every day, you're doing your job. But if you're one of the big hitters in your guild, you need to get multiple defense for your guild to win. So there you go. All right, guys. That's all I got for today. Uh, this video is probably longer than I intended to be. I don't time them, so I don't know. But if you liked it, please give it that thumbs up. That really helps the metric, like push it out there. And then throw me a, a subscribe if you haven't. And I will see y'all in my next video.